Welcome to the CE Pro Podcast. I'm Executive Editor Arlen Schweiger. The big ISC West security trade show in Las Vegas is just around the corner, and we have one of the leading video surveillance providers in the world on this week's CE Pro Podcast to walk us through technologies, analytics, applications, trends, and much more. Frederick Nilsson, VP of the Americas at Axis Communications, joined me for a conversation last summer that is still very much relevant today for custom integrators. So the spotlight is on smart security in this week's podcast episode. As always, be sure to subscribe to CE Pro's YouTube channel and hit that like button on our videos or subscribe to the CE Pro podcast on Apple and Spotify and leave a review. <laughs> Frederick Nielsen, VP of the Americas at Access Communications. Thanks for joining the CE Pro podcast. Arlen, very happy to be here. We're even in the same state today, so even though we're not in the same room. We are, yep, up, up in the great state of Massachusetts in New England. Um, Frederick, it's certainly, it's a, it's a global company. Uh, you know, we wanted to talk about security and surveillance uh, in this episode of the podcast. So let's start by telling us about the company, Access Communications. Um, where the company's based globally in the United States, uh, markets that you serve, solutions portfolio, things of that nature, Frederick. Sure, absolutely. So Axis is uh, a company based out of the south, southern part of Sweden, where I'm from originally, even though I lived here in the US for now 20 years, pretty much. Um, we are a, always been in the IP networking business. The company was founded back in 1984. And by 1996, we invented the IP network camera, originally more for a web attraction, remote monitoring use. Then we realized there's a lot of cameras in the security industry. And fast forward to today, Axis is the leader, not only in the IP camera space, but the overall video surveillance space for security, a position that we've grown ourselves into organically over the last 25 years since we launched that product. And today we are close to $1.5 billion in revenue globally. 60% of that is here in the Americas. So that's our biggest market. Um, and here in the Americas, we have, we're based a uh, headquarter out of yes, north of Boston, Chelmsford, where I'm based out of today. And we have uh, 16 other locations with what we call access experience centers um out there uh, throughout the americas and even more in, in europe and apac as well so so that's kind of a brief overview your readers might not be totally familiar with us we are more on the commercial side even if we do some residential and when we say residential it's more of the higher end residential or the the multi-dwelling unit kind of things uh, but once you get into the video surveillance uh, space and and uh, and you start looking at cameras you can see our brand uh, everywhere. So we do a lot of um, airports, um, schools, uh, retailers, uh, government business, banks, the large commercial companies, data centers, uh, all the Fortune 500. That's kind of our sweet spot for the video surveillance uh, that we do. Sure. Okay. And, and we know certainly on the residential side, uh, we know that our dealers are putting in security and surveillance and you know, oftentimes in very high end homes, very extensive properties. Uh, so they're using sometimes more enterprise solutions. And I know a lot of them do turn to access um, as a solution there. And I know you we also noted um, in talking to me beforehand that you guys do a lot in the MDU space, uh, the multi dwelling unit space. Uh, and there's a lot of good possibilities there, too. So absolutely. So typically, if you there's a lot of solutions out there inexpensive for the single cameras, like for the home or for the doorbell cameras. Uh, yes, we have some of those solutions, probably a little pricey for the regular homes. Um, and then there is the inexpensive four camera solutions. You want to have a couple of cameras outside, not totally our, our uh, cup of tea because of, of, the, of the functionality we have and, and the complexity of the solutions. But if you're looking at any 10 cameras or 20 cameras and above, that's kind of the space we're playing. And of course, the large systems we have, airport schools, are four, 5,000 cameras. So that's wow. kind of really the sweet spot. But from 20, 15, 20 cameras and up, that's really a good sweet spot if you have a customer that is very uh, particular about the quality of the video and the functionality of the system. We do quite a few of those systems as well. Sure. And we know a lot of our, our guys are getting more into sort of the resi-mercial areas, commercial yeah applications, things like that. So they'll definitely be looking into things of that nature. 
Can you tell us a little bit, Frederick, about the types of cameras that you have? Uh, even, you know, when you say IP cameras, some of our dealers, you know, might not be quite at the uh, more experienced security end than other dealers, but, you know, what does the IP camera mean in having, you know, network intelligence right to the camera that they can add into a security system? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And if you go back in, in history, we don't have to go back too far, but 10 years ago and, and, and before that, when you talk about a camera, it was a pretty unintelligent device. It was a camera with an analog output, generated pretty good image quality. Then you need to have a point-to-point -point coaxial cable from each of the cameras into the recording device, and then the recording device digitized the video, provided a little bit of intelligence, made it possible for you to remotely monitor it. With an IP camera, most of that functionality was moved into the camera. So you compress the video, you digitize it, you analyze the video, you can even store it on an SD card, and then you connect it to an IP cable instead of the analog, which means, first of all, you no, no more point to point, you have a typical network infrastructure. And if you have a camera connected to a router or to a network, like I have my home in Sweden, I can, from my phone, monitoring it here with zero cost, except for the bandwidth that you need to do. So now you have global access, remote access, full integration of, of the of the system as well. Uh, and also because of the limits of the analog technology, uh, the resolution had, had limits in how far you can go. And, and an IP camera with the kind of sensors we can use and the picture formats we can use, you basically can do any kind of resolution. That comes with some caveats and light sensitivity. Let's not get into all the technical details. But that is also one of the benefits. And yes, to hopefully uh, clarify a little bit of confusion that is out there, there is kind of an intermediate technology out there called HD CCTV, which is has some of the benefits with the high resolution of the analog camera, but that's it. There is no intelligence, no compression in the actual camera. Then you need, still need to have a point to point to some kind of recording device. Some people think that's like an IP camera. It's not. Uh, and, and it has some limitation. But in the RESI space, those solutions still exist. And I think it's important for the dealers to understand the old type analog, the intermediate HD CCTV, and the full IP solutions and the difference uh, between those. Okay. Uh, Frederick, what are some other differentiating, differentiating features of some of your cameras, uh, some of your offerings that Axis has? You know, certainly the category is very competitive. There are lots of choices out there for dealers. What are some of the things that they should look at uh, specifically about your cameras that you know would really help address some of the, the trends and demands that uh, customers have out there that I'll have you talk about in a minute? You're absolutely right. There's no lack of, of brands and, and, and um, options out there. Like in any good growing competitive market, there should be a lot of options out there. And if you go to like the ISC West show that actually happened again this year in, in April, you look around and there's 700 booths that if you're newbie to the industry, they all look the same. It's like, how can be there so many vendors out there? So I think, but before we go into the, the technical details, first of all, these are relative or very complex solutions that you, you have a camera and you put it outside, you're supposed to install it. And I'm looking out in the parking lot here, especially if it sits out on a pole and to work for the next 10 years without touching it in cold weather, in, in, in warm weather, um, and stream video being upgradable and all those. So these are kind of pretty complex units today with great, great, great capabilities when it comes to intelligence and when it comes to image quality. But when it comes for the dealers and the differentiated things, I think there's three things that are kind of outside of the cameras that I'd like to mention first and from an access perspective. And first of all, one thing we have, we're truly partner-oriented companies. So we have a what we think is a great, very, well-structured dealer program where if you're dedicated and you work with our solutions and you get trained, you, you can kind of be a very good long-term partner and build a great business uh, out of working together with us. And we never go on the side and sell online or sell direct. We always go through our two-tier channel of distribution and then the dealers that do the integration and so forth. So I think that's kind of one thing. Also in that partner uh, context, we don't do all our solution ourselves. We have a fully open solution. We have a lot of partners developing applications that run on our cameras. We have a lot of applications that run to manage the video or integrate it into all kinds of different systems. We have a fully open API, and I think we have 
an official close to three or four thousand partners that develop solutions. So if you want to do custom solutions for some kind of homes or, or, or residential uh, or any installations, you have full capability of doing that and we don't charge partners for, 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 for that openness. So I think the partner side is one thing that we kind of is, is unique. The other one is focusing on education. We have Axis Academy, that is a certification program that we've been running. I think we have 30,000 people certified globally and you need recertification to stay in the partner program because we want to have knowledge, knowledgeable partners that can represent as well, keep the end customer happy, keep the dealers happy as well. And we're focusing a lot of that. You can do that training online, but you can also go to one of our Axis Experience Centers of which we have 60 now and I think 12, 11, 11 or yeah, 12 or so are throughout the US, not maybe necessarily close to every location, but it's not too far away. Where we have 24 people training rooms, full labs, all those kind of things where people can go in and get the real hands on and get trained on the technology as well. So that's the other differentiator we have. And, and the third one I would say, and that ties into your question, because of our size and because of our uh, the fabrics of the company, our, our our vision is innovating for a smarter, safer world, and we love innovation. I'm an engineer by trade, and we pour as much money as possible into innovation. So we always have new solutions and new firmware and new cameras and solutions outside of cameras coming out all the time just to make sure we kind of push the envelope of how far you can go and the capabilities of the systems and solutions and so forth. So I think those are the kind of differentiated we have. And, and back to your question from five years, five minutes ago when you said, what kind of cameras do you have? It's such a wide variety of everything from fixed cameras to smart PTZ cameras, to multi-sensor cameras, to fixed dome cameras, to encoders, to built-in solutions, to modular cameras, to thermal cameras, to now body-worn cameras, to all kind of cameras. And hence the importance of getting educated um, on our solutions in the Access Academy program because there's so much being launched all the time that you need to be updated on to really make the most out of it for the end customer and for your own business as well. Right, there's a lot out there right now. Uh, yeah. Frederick, let's, let's, let's talk about some of that uh, in terms of you know trends that are happening on the MDU side, on the commercial side, uh, applications and markets that are doing well right now. Uh, what can you tell us a bit about what, what's in demand for customers? Certainly the pandemic caused a real spike in security, uh, in security demand that we're you know, still seeing, I think. I don't know if, is, if that is something, the, the trends that you're continuing to see in the MDU market and commercial, how is, it, how is that looking, Frederick, uh, before we start talking about you know, the possibilities that are out there, the types of video analytics that, uh, that dealers can install? Mm -hmm. That's a, that's, a, that's a really good question. I think the, the, we jokingly say the, the security market is a good market because in good times people have money to spend and the market, our market is growing. And in bad times they want to protect what they have and our market is growing. And in the, in the horrible pandemic that we just had, people want to make things more effective and, and use remote monitoring and optimize uh, business processes and that also made things to grow. We had one example, I think we have a case study out in it that's a MDU down in uh, lower Manhattan, where they felt that they didn't want to have the traditional doorman. This is a higher end facility. Well, everything in Manhattan is higher end, I guess, today. Uh, they didn't want to have the traditional doorman for, for this 30 unit MDU that you maybe would have done in the past. So they put the latest and greatest solution in from Axis. And, and this is something I should have said before, we also operate another brand, a company we bought some five years ago called 2N, uh, like number two and then uh, letter N, um, that we are super happy to have in our portfolio and is really geared towards the MDU space. But this, um, this um, uh, apartment facility in, in New York City put a solution in to have a fully virtual doorman, a doorman who can actually man manage many facilities, didn't have to be on site 24-7, didn't call in sick in the sense that, you know, you can change that position and have different people cover at different times. And everyone in the in the units have their own app, they have their own fob that you can open the door with and, and open it. It's all fully based in the cloud. You can open the elevator, you can open the bike room and kind of having a modern automated building using the latest technology. So we see a lot more of that uh, tremendous growth in that space, 
where traditionally you have the door unit that was analog, it was point to point wired, it was to every single unit, you had to have a doorman, you can maybe, you know, browse on a screen, but typically you have to change, you know, the printed name, you know, there is Ar Arlen, I want to call him and press, and if you're not home, you couldn't open the door, and, and that's still the reality that kind of were the old analog solution, and with 2N, we fully uh, digitize it fully IP, fully remote, and, and with the latest, you know, uh, touch screen technology and IP base, you can connect it to the cloud and all those things. So that's, that's, that's a big trend that we see in the MDU. Another trend we have as well, and that's the benefit we have of having both the kind of intercom slash door stations that we use with the 2N, and our video surveillance is when you have a fully integrated system, we have security and perimeter security and in some of the hallways as well, fully integrated together um, with the intercom system as well that, mind you, do integrate cameras as well. So you can pull the video from the intercom and see who was at the door together with the cameras from the perimeter and the bike room and the hallways to create the security system tied into the intercom as well and also tie it into the access control and tie it into the cloud if you want to store the video off-site and make sure anyone who's managing the facility can access the video if you want or even tenants if you have that ability as well. So in general that's not the typical MDU or home or residential building you have today but it's definitely a very very quick trend and not only for new uh, buildings, totally for new buildings but also to refurb older ones and make them more attractive for the tenants. So. Uh, to, to great, great opportunity for, for you know providing technology in, into those environments. Frederick, let's talk about video analytics and you know some of the some of the requests that your dealers are getting from you know either MDU property owners, property managers, or commercial customers, uh, commercial, you know, resi-commercial, commercial. But um, for our integrators out there who are kind of maybe just getting into security or don't quite know the uh, how extensive a system can be with the amount of data that can come in and what you're able to do with the data these days. Mm -hmm. um, what can you what can you tell us about there in terms of, you know, some sort of popular analytics uh, features that they're able to program for customers? And, you know, what are some examples of those? Uh, how does AI come into play with that? Um, but, you know, give us an example of how some of your dealers are, are using these cameras. Yeah. Uh, another good question as analytics have been the holy grail of video systems for the longest time because there's no lack of data and those cameras generate 30 frames, could can generate 30 frames a second and store days, weeks, months worth of video. And both you and I know that no one is ever going to look at that video. So if something happens, how do you find it? Well, let's go back in, 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 in history. The first kind of analytic that came out on the edge was with the, one of the access cameras back 20 plus years ago that had built in video motion detection. We thought it was the greatest thing. And we thought 90% accuracy, that must be good enough, which is with everything going on, it's not even close to good enough. And then you have all the things that can happen in the environment. I'm looking outside, there's trees moving with the branches, there is rain, there is fog and you keep on getting triggers all the time from the wrong thing. So that, is, that was going on up until some five years ago. And to, to, to program it to become better was easy to do in the lab, but in real environment, most of those analytics were not super, super good or not good enough to really um, implement on a large scale. What has happened over the last two, three, four, five years is something, some people refer to AI, I, I like to avoid the term because it's still pretty much programmed, but it's a little bit of self-learning happening in the cameras with something called deep learning, so deep learning processing. And NVIDIA was a great company coming out with processes for this, but it's all based on the servers. And then you have to transmit all this data over to the servers, process is there to do the analysis, and that doesn't really become scalable um, if you have five cameras, especially not if you have 5,000 cameras. But what happened over the last few years is that now there's processes with good enough deep learning capabilities in the cameras that can do the analytics accurate enough. And only over the last year or two, it really become, have come up with an accuracy that is just far beyond anything we've seen in the past. So 
if I was a dealer or integrator, I've been toying around with, with video motion detection and some object analytics in the past and say, this is too many false alarms, triggers too often, I'm going to stop looking at it. This is the time to reconsider and look at it because it's really becoming good enough. Um, and, and if you look at one of the most popular thing that could be relevant for a residential area is what's called object analytics, where instead of saying, there is motion. I don't know if it's the UPS truck or a kid coming home or a tree branch. There's motion in the picture and eventually you and I get tired of looking at it. Now we can say it's a truck or it's a car or it's a bike or it's a, it's a human and the color of the jacket. So I can set it up to say when someone comes with a brown jacket, probably the UPS guy, please send me alarm, but no one with yellow jackets or red jackets. And that works today. It was not even close to working just a few years ago. So, so that is really a cool um, features of most cameras and most systems today. And we chatted a little bit before, where is that analysis being done? It's not done in the cameras. You don't have to send it over the cloud and use all your bandwidth to send it. You can just get the metadata. It's like guy with a brown jacket at the door. So now I know that. So that, that's a really cool feature. Another one that's relevant also for multi-dwelling units is license plate recognition is, is really becoming good enough, and especially if you have people that volunteer the license plates instead of doing your fob or your tag when you drive through the garage, it recognizes your license plate, opens the gate and out you go. And that's a good feature as well that is really working very well today. Sure, and how about on the commercial side? What are some of the, you know, maybe some custom use cases that you're seeing uh, dealers implement with, uh, you know, the way they are able to prog program certain things, uh, business intelligence, efficiencies, I know things that um, some end users who run businesses are looking at video cameras, not only just for surveillance, but to get uh, actionable intelligence on how they can, you know, enhance their business. Yeah, so, so there's lots of those and, and, you know, you hear about people uh, counting fish in, in fish factories and, and detecting if there is uh, uh, bones in, in, in chicken at a chicken processing plant. Those are fun, but not very, you know, plentiful, those applications. I wouldn't focus too much on those. But there's a couple that are really becoming very prevalent and that people are using to save money and save time. One example is, uh, which is a little bit of a security application, but could be other things as well, called perimeter protection, where instead of you having some kind of fence, you can kind of put a virtual fence in place, especially if you use thermal cameras, it becomes extremely accurate to finding if there's animals or if there's humans passing a certain line into an area, if that's a train track, to make sure you can't run a train if there's someone on the on the train track. And instead of having someone monitoring and looking at it, you can put virtual fence around the train track with thermal cameras along the way. So that's kind of a business case. You can also have it around a school that if no one is around in the area, no lights have been turned on, you save a lot of energies. And if someone gets close, you turn a couple of lights on without putting triggers or PR sensors. You just can move that line around depending on the needs uh, for that school or that facility. And other more business oriented use cases that people use a lot is in, in retail. And they've been kind of a trailblazer to some extent looking into those analytics, but also again with the accuracy, looking at traffic, look at, looking at uh, counting people, looking at uh, end cap activity and, and, and heat maps and those kind of things. It, it's really becoming a thing uh, that, that a lot of retailers are using today as opposed to just toying around with a couple of years ago, yes, because of the accuracy. Sure, so certainly a lot of possibilities out there today. Uh, Frederick, for dealers, for for your integrators out there, <clears throat> certainly it sounds like some of these systems can get really complex uh, to figure out, to, you know, to pitch to consumers, to put together a proposal. What kind of support does uh, Access provide in terms of, you know, specking a system, designing it, commissioning it, you know, servicing it, things of that. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And this kind of, as a, as a manufacturer of the system, there's always a, 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 um, a balance between showing all the features and the settings you can do uh, versus making it as easy as possible to use. And, and, you know, just showing the basics. We have a system called Companion that is a, a software uh, we just do local recording to a NAS device or SD card. It's super easy to install. Even you and I can install it. You plop in a couple of cards and it's kind of self-configured and you get going very, very quickly and then you can dig deeper if you want into it. Then we have 
end-to-end -end solutions uh, like access camera stations. You scale up to maybe 100 cameras, typically more like 20, 30 cameras like we talked about before that have tons of opportunities to do integration of audio, integration of intercom, integration of access control and tweak things in different ways but still trying to keep it quite simple. And then we have partners such as Genetech and Milestone that we typically work with uh, on large scale systems, th you know, hundreds, thousands of cameras. And of course, you can tweak those forever and, and install different apps on different cameras and so forth. Right. And they're so, provide those companies, are, they're providing the video management systems for things like that. Good, good clarification. Yes. Mm -hmm. Genetech and Milestone, we have many, many more, is provide the VMS is kind of the best of breed system with access cameras and maybe other brands as well integrated into those large VMS systems and so right. forth. Okay. And so, Frederick, how are, how are your uh, your dealers? Are they earning recurring revenue for some of these things? You know, when they're when they're putting in with in analytics that they can show reports to clients, uh, things like that. Yeah. So so first, your question I for, forgot to answer how how do you help them specify those systems? It can get very complex. Some of the systems are sort of self uh, self self uh, describing a little bit like the companion system. We recommend everyone to go to the Axis training. We recommend everyone to go to our partner trainings, the Genetech Milestones, Salians, Linnells, whatever you have, um, and, and to, to, to get certified on those. We also have a tool that really become very, very useful over the last couple of years called Axis Site Designer, with which you can specify a system with our software, with a couple of the partner software as well, where you choose the cameras, you choose the resolution, you choose the bandwidth, and once you design the system, you can document and show it to your customer, and once everything comes to you delivered and you install it, you can download those files into the system, so now you set it up the, the same way you designed it and save a lot of time and document it as well. That is a really, really, really cool tool to, to, to use as well. So that's what we're trying to do to, to, to make sure we help the dealers to optimize the installation to save the time and, and kind of help them to, to document the system as well. We also, of course, have tech support. Just here in Chelmsford, we have around uh, 60 techs on the phone. So we pride ourselves that if you call our, our tech support, within a minute, you get a live person on the phone and we'd be happy to help you, talk you through, show what the documentation is and so forth. You can chat with us, you can email with us uh, and, and those things as well. And of course, we have the same in APAC and, and, and uh, over in Europe as well. So, so that's what we're doing to help the dealer because we realize it's complex. Some of them have done it for many, many years. They know it inside out, but we have a lot of new people coming on board. I want to learn it. And we're trying to provide as much help as we can for, for those dealers. Sure, that makes a lot of sense. And I'm sorry, I, I had jumped ahead a little bit. No, no. Are, you had a your... Yeah, the, the cloud question, right? Or the, well, for uh, the dealers our... that are able to um, you know, implement these and do, you know, some advanced analytics for customers. Are they able to put together sort of video surveillance as a service models as part of that? Are they getting service contracts or, you know, recurring revenue out of these surveillance solutions? Yeah. So, so the answer is yes. And there's different ways of doing that. And um, for the larger installs, we have tools that are made for managing the system. So when it comes to a larger system, more commercial system, any end customer want to make sure cameras are functioning, they're upgraded. If you have more than 25 or 50 cameras, you have someone to kind of maintain and support it all the time. And we have tools for that, something we call ADM X Axis Device Manager Extend that as a dealer, you can log into the system, you can show the customer everything is operational, you can give them a report. And you said, you know, pay me access to service contract, make sure everything is up and running and updated from a cyber perspective and so forth. So that's one tool we have. When it comes to the more maybe medium sized systems and your dealer who installed 50, syst or 50 systems of 5, 10 cameras each, uh, we have a lot of partners like uh, your six, uh, like an Arculus, like an Eagle Eye that do because of our openness, integrate our cameras into true cloud solutions that are being sold more on an RMR basis. Um, so, so that's definitely an opportunity to kind of build that kind of business. Uh, but we do it strictly through partner, uh, partnering with, with some of those companies. And depending on the size, we'd be happy to point dealers to, you should work with this partner, that partner, and, and so forth. So, and that's definitely 
a growing trend and, and a business model that more and more want to kind of uh, set up. And, and from a security perspective, that's nothing new because what's been the, what's the big driver in the security market for the, you know, many, many years is the ADTs of the world that do remote monitoring, not a video, but of alarms, right? And you install six alarms in your home and a PIR sensor, you can't see anything. And they start a little panel and then they start to charge you an I-29 bucks a month and then they monitor your home. So that business model is very, very prevalent in the security market. And now it's moving towards the video side as well. Sometimes tied in with the alarm and sometimes kind of as a separate system. Sir, sure, definitely, uh, you know, a lot of possibilities out there for integrators who want to look at sort of all these different business models around <clears throat> around security and surveillance and, you know, the various types of uh, systems that they're deploying for end users out there. So, Frederick, appreciate you kind of running through all that. Uh, what else, lastly, can you tell us about the company Access Communications and, you know, your roadmap for the rest of uh, 2023 when it comes to product development? Uh, and where dealers can connect with you uh, for the second half of the year? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a great question. And you have to go back a little bit where we started about Axis, uh, 1.5 billion, and we pour as much as possible, which is around 15%. So that makes up around 200 million in R&D every year. And I was just coming back from uh, a little bit of a holiday and, and work in my, as I call it, work, uh, workation in Sweden. Um, and we have, you know, 1,500 uh, or getting close to 2,000 engineers over there working on yet the next thing. And they're looking at the, we do our own chipsets, the ArtPix that include fantastic capabilities, both from image compression, image quality, uh, and uh, as we talked about before, deep learning more on the intelligence side. And we are in revision eight now that are just launching that generation, but I know they're looking at the next two generations already. So yes, what we're gonna do over the next five years. And in those areas, when it comes to image quality, when it comes to analytics, uh, there will be a lot of things happening over the next couple of years. So the cameras, if you knew the Axis cameras or any cameras two years ago, the quality today is just totally different and it would be totally so much better two years from now. So that is exciting from an engineering perspective. And I jokingly said, um, I think it was five, six, seven years ago, when finally the cameras had better vision than our eyes. Now you can't even compare. They're so much better than you and I can see at night. You look outside and you think it's dark and the camera will show you a picture with blue skies because the sky is blue at night, even though you and I can't see it. And with colors and everything like that. So, so that capability is just getting uh, better and better all the time. So, so that's one thing that is happening, and I think it's important to kind of keep updated with what's going on on the camera side and, and the capabilities. The other one is the system integration, because we talked about all this intelligence in the cameras, but it's only as good as the way you use it, because now we, we spit out a lot of metadata from each of the cameras, but the integration into different system to do what we said before, find, find yellow cars that pass on the street, find when the deer is walking through the yard, but not when the bear is coming or the kids are coming, whatever you want to do, um, it, it is a possibility as well. So that's on the camera and the solution side, but what's the most exciting opportunity for me, we touched upon it a little bit before, we are now active in three new markets uh, since a couple of years, IP-based access control, IP-based intercom with a company 2N I mentioned before, and IP-based audio. And those markets are sort of where the IP camera market was 10 plus years ago. Immature, most is still analog. We still need to educate on the basic functionality. If you walk around in an airport today, you see a lot of cameras, you see even more speakers. It's all analog wired, all super expensive system to build out, no flexibility. So that's areas where we are now launching solutions like Audio Manager Pro for managing IP-based audio system. So whatever you learn in the space of IP video, you can now mimic in intercoms, audio or access control. And that is where we are the most excited because now we expanded the market, an opportunity for us and for our dealers by a factor three or factor 10, depending on how you look at it. And that's, that's pretty cool to see all those things coming out. That's very cool. Well, it's certainly a, a very exciting time to get into the security world. Exciting things happening at Access Communications. And with that, Frederick Nielsen, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you going over all of this uh, security and surveillance and you know, all the trends and solutions for our CE pros out there. 
My pleasure. Thank you for uh, for uh, con connecting with me, Arlen.